Um, hello everybody, I'm really happy to be here and I'm really happy uh, to see uh, so many of you here. The good news is that the launch of our uh, council has already been reported on many news sites from Reuters to the Washington Post uh, to uh, the Daily Telegraph to the BBC uh, and so hopefully uh, this is just the beginning of a very, very large movement in defense of humanity, universal rights and against reaction uh, in the world today. Um, you know, a lot of people have been asking us, well, why have we established a council of ex-Muslims of Britain? And, and there are so many, many reasons. It's hard to talk about uh, why, why, give one or two reasons for it. Uh, one would obviously be because we want to break the taboo that comes with renouncing Islam. Um, apostasy, as, as uh, our other speakers have mentioned, is a crime that is punishable by death in countries ruled by Islamic law. Uh, but it's not only um, uh, in, in those countries, uh, people who are deemed apostates uh, are intimidated and threatened, even in countries, uh, in, in Europe for example, that doesn't have Islamic law as the law of the land. Um, I've already received uh, quite a number of interesting emails from Islamists, and one of them says, uh, a Muslim is always a Muslim. Uh, it is not possible for us to leave Islam. Well, I, I have to tell him and many others, watch us. It is possible and we're doing it. Whilst renouncing religion is obviously a private affair today, uh, a private affair and we, we, we uh, promote the, the, the stance that religion or not having one should be a private matter, should be a personal matter. But because today, uh, with the rise of religion's intervention, it isn't. It isn't. We feel the need to do this renunciation publicly, in front of society, in order to be able to pave the way for the many others who want to uh, leave but are unable to. As I've said, there, there are so many, many different reasons. Another, of course, is in my opinion to publicly challenge the political Islamic movement that is wreaking havoc in North Africa, in the Middle East, uh, in places where it has state power, um, and, and uh, its interventions in societies where it's vying for state power, for some sort of power, some access to power, like in countries in Europe and in Britain. Um, I think its track record is very clear for the world. We're not living in another planet. We're not talking about a century that's passed. We're talking about today and a movement whose track record is so clear for everyone to see. Um, any degree of control, any degree of uh, power and access that has, it has in society, to that degree, it makes the lives of women, of men, of children miserable. Don't be mistaken, we are declaring today a political challenge to this movement. Uh, Inayat Banglawala, who is a spokesperson for the Muslim Council of Britain, uh, recently said in the Comment is Free site that uh, AC Graylin also spoke, uh, wrote on uh, discussing our, our council, he said when Khomeini, I quote, delivered his fatwa uh, for Salman Rushdie's death, he was elated. It reminded him that he was part of a truly global and powerful movement. Of course he is. Of course he was. Of course he is. As I've said before, they are all very much part of a right-wing reactionary movement that is global, uh, that is powerful. But so are we. So are we. We are a vast human movement against political Islam that is bringing the regime in Iran to its knees. And we are going to do the same with this movement here in Europe. Many are also elated, as he was elated at Salman Rushdie's fatwa by Khomeini. Many, many, many innumerable people are elated at the establishment of our council and at, at our defense of Salman Rushdie, at our defense of secularism, at our defense of humanism, at our defense of universal values and norms. As I've said, so many, many reasons. Another is uh, our in, uh, the fact that this council is, uh, is uh, insisting that people not be handed over lock, stock, and barrel to regressive Islamic organizations like the Muslim Council of Britain, like the Islamic Human Rights Commission, uh, oxymorons in my opinion, and pigeonholed as, quote, Muslims, uh, when, when there are a thousand characteristics that can define people or that they define themselves by, to make, quote, Muslim the most important characteristic of millions of people is part of the attempt to Islamicize people and relegate them to the political Islamic movement. We will not allow it. 
There are so many reasons, as I, as I said, for this council. But the main one for all of us is the human being. In the 21st century, why must people be labeled? Why must they be compartmentalized? Why must, be, why must they be fragmented and divided into a million categories, beginning with religious and not even ending in human? Why should we be forever minorities and never equal citizens before the law? Why should the intolerable be tolerated, respected at the expense of people's lives? Our call today is to join us, and there will be many who will join us. Our call is to support us, and there are already innumerable people uh, who, who are supporting us and will support us. We will change the debate and the climate to the benefit of people in this country and across the world, and to the disadvantage of the political Islamic movement. Most importantly, uh, I, I just want to mention two, two cases uh, that are directly linked to the political Islamic movement. One is a woman who was to be stoned to death today, a mother of four children, um, because of having a relationship outside of marriage with a man and having a child who's 11 years old with that man. She's not going to be stoned to death because of the public pressure that's taken place. This is the movement we represent and are part of. And the other is uh, a young ex-Muslim, Asra, who actually uh, said it's her birthday today. And she had written a comment in response to A.C. Grayling's beautiful commentary uh, about this uh, organization and its importance. Uh, and uh, I wish her a happy birthday. And it is for her and for many, many countless people like her. So I thank you for coming here. Uh, and I look forward to working closely with each and every one of you uh, to, to really bring about the change that's needed um, to make this, this country uh, and this world worthy of, uh, of human beings in the 21st century. Thank you.